Maddie. <laughs> we're great. <laughs> we're so happy to be here. Um, we're so happy to be here. So this is Terry Fidanza, life coach and um, founder of Girl Power for Good Foundation. And this is Jen Gabby, founder of Sport, which is a kind of conglomeration of coaching and wellness and physical therapy and all, all of those good things. things. <laughs> and there's a lot of laughter involved. Uh, yes, because we have to laugh at ourselves. We have to laugh at ourselves. So it is now 104. We were all set up for this video and everything went wrong. So doesn't that just sort of lead right into our topic, which is something is better than nothing? Because, you know, in a perfect world, we would have had everything set up and we would be ready for this. But I had dental surgery on Monday that I thought was today after this. <laughs> Jen just came in with her hair on fire yes. because of a scheduling change. And this is the perfect petri dish for testing out what the holidays are like because that's you know you have a plan and then <laughs> and then there's change one and two and 14 whatever right so what we wanted to do here when we talked about this you know last month when it seemed so far away was <laughs> to um create a place for you guys to come and have a resource for some ideas about how to have a more merry holiday season with less stress, hopefully, and more joy, hopefully. So I have some tips here that I've used in the past that have really worked for me because I am a stress monster. Jen is completely calm. She has no oh, yeah. stress whatsoever. None. No. Yep. yep. I just deal with it. Maybe we deal with it in slightly different ways or the same ways. It could be. Maybe it's because I've learned so much from you Aww. just chatting over the times. And so it's really important to yeah. put all of this information out for others yes. to also learn. And uh, I know that I deal with my stress in a, in a different way maybe. So hopefully putting us both together, yeah. it'll work with something that you are dealing with as well. Right, exactly. So we are two weeks tomorrow, Thanksgiving, right? Yes. How is that for something so So great? I'm not ready. Two weeks. Don't have a turkey yet. Don't. Not even close. Ha. And so two weeks. Two weeks. It's okay. I, I shouldn't have done that. It's but fine. It's two weeks till Thanksgiving. But here's the thing. We have two weeks to think about how to do things differently. Unless your holiday seasons are super calm and stress-free and you're just waking up and things are great. And if that's the case, you need to please tell us what to do. Yeah. But most people have trouble during the holidays. I remember my mother would have nightmares about Christmas, mm. nightmares about buying presents and getting it all done. And my mother was the least stressed person I have ever met. <laughs> holidays just do that holidays to you. Holidays just do that to you. So I would like to, first of all, just tell you guys that whatever is happening is okay. Like, if things go awry, you have no plan, you just wing it, all of that is fine. It's absolutely fine. You get to pick what your Thanksgiving is gonna look like. The way I do that is not how will I, you know, what am I gonna make for dinner? What am I gonna wear? Not how it's going to look, but how it's going to feel. So we're practicing with Thanksgiving because it's a little bit less stressed than, than Christmas. And um, so I'm thinking this is a this is a good trial period. Mm -hmm. It's like a good experiment, experimental yeah, it's like period. a warm-up. It's like a warm-up, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so first of all, how do you want your Thanksgiving to feel? For me personally, I would like my Thanksgiving to feel playful. And the reason I choose playful instead of calm or peaceful or any of that stuff is inside playful is calm and peace and joy. Playful, though, keeps things a little lighter. So that's my intention for my Thanksgiving. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Mm, I like I like that. I like playful because I, I feel like if we get too stressed and wrapped up into the details, then you lose the fun of the holiday. Yeah. And so playful, it should be fun. I mean, right. playful is fun, fun for the holiday. Right. And that's what everybody wants to come over for anyway. Right. You might have those who are, 
I don't want to say judgy, but who are judging the things or how oh, things go, or whatever. Nobody and has judgy relatives. Nobody, not at no. all. That doesn't exist. But if you can get to the point where things are playful and we're realizing we're doing this for fun, then, then yes. that just doesn't matter. Yes, yes. And also, you know, I that's something that has, I actually called my youngest today and I'm like, what would you say tips, you know, tips for making Thanksgiving happy and fun? And she was saying, well, you know, kind of trying to deal with relatives that you don't see all the time. That's a huge one. Like that is a, that is a really important skill mm -hmm. to have um, because you can't shut them out. I mean, you can, you can, but, but there's ramifications for that. Mm -hmm. So um, if you choose to invite these somewhat difficult relatives along, you have a choice of how you deal with them. So if you can figure out how you want Thanksgiving to feel, then that'll be your guide with how you do everything. I highly recommend asking your kids how they want Thanksgiving to feel. Mm. Because if they want Thanksgiving to feel joyful and playful and fun, you being in the kitchen all day is not, is not getting them there, right? Yeah. So um, same daughter that I called today has a uh, coworker who's getting their whole dinner from, from Honey Bank Tam. Yep. Like, I think he said like 200 bucks for seven people. And it's done. Picks it up, brings it home. Like, that's an option. Yep. I am paring things down a lot, a lot. Because mm -hmm. it's just going to be like the three of us. Mm -hmm. um, what do you do for dinner? I mean, my husband's working. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. We're, we always do something on Thanksgiving we're probably going to do something on a different day just because it works better for our family. And really, as far as Thanksgiving goes, yes, it's supposed to be on the Thursday, but it doesn't really matter, especially Precisely. because for me, family is the important thing for Thanksgiving. Right. It's not the day, right. it's having the people around with you. Right. So, um, but I do, I like brining a turkey. So I do have to plan, okay. right? Cause, yes. Because brining a turkey makes it easy for me to then maybe not pay attention to cooking it as much because you're pretty much guaranteed a juicy bird. There you go. Or we have even, I don't want to say that, maybe, well, Jade, maybe we will just get a deep fryer. Yeah. Because Or a smoker, because we've been talking about that for a while. There you go. Ideas. So many things to, that, that are going to decrease the amount of time of, of all of that work in the yes. kitchen. Yes. That's, that's going to be that's not your stress. that's not your happy place is doing all that work in the kitchen. Because some no. people it is. Like it is their happy place. They mm -hmm. love to be in the kitchen. Right. Um, I am not one of those people. I don't enjoy lots of time. Right. Right. And that's a lot. I mean, think yes. about everything that you're putting yes. together. For me, one of the stressors when I was younger growing up is uh, everything had to be warm. Yes. So you had to plan how yes. everything came out yes. at the right time, all of the things that cook at different temperatures. Right. And need to, so how do you do that? Especially if you only have one oven. Right. And depending on how many people you cook for. Like it's, it's absolutely craziness. Yes. So I don't have to worry about that anymore because I don't, I'm yeah. not saying that I don't care, but it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. And, that, and that's the thing is to figure out, first of all, how you want to feel. Then what supports that? Mm -hmm. So if it feels fun to you to stay in the kitchen and cook all day, and that is like one of your values is I really want to hand make this and it doesn't stress you out. It feels like fun and for the love of God, do that, right? You get to figure out what feels good, but I would definitely fold your kids into that mm -hmm. because what feels good to you may not feel good to them. And if you're thinking I'm doing this for my children and yet they want something completely different, You'll never know that unless you ask them. Yeah. So that's really important. Ask your kids, figure out how you want to feel, and then you want to protect those feelings, right? So this probably means you're going to have to say no to someone to protect a feeling of playful. So if somebody wants you to do something specifically for them that is um, time intensive, it could be anyone. It could be one of those relatives. You know, they want a special blah, 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 dish, then you're going to have to say, I completely understand. Then for you to get it exactly the way you want it, why don't you just go ahead and bring that? You bring that dish. Then we can all try it. I think that sounds like fun, right? That's fun for you. And you've turned it around on them to keep it fun for you. 
So drawing boundaries, a compassionate no is a beautiful thing. <laughs> so, um, you know, saying no to little bitty things before they get bigger, that's another beautiful thing. Because if people, especially if you're a people pleaser, mm. do you know anything about that? Yes. One or two <laughs> things? That's, I just can say yes. <laughs> yes. If you're a people pleaser, it's going to be in your nature to just say, oh, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. I'll just do it. I'll just do it. No. And then you have 10 things. That then you're you have do. 10 things. So ask for help. Ask for help. That's really hard. I know. That's why it takes practice. It does. You can start now. You can ask me for help before you leave and with anything, something ridiculous. It really takes practice, you guys. Asking for help and asking for help in a way that doesn't feel like you're barking orders. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing. But you know, so many people who are not good at asking for help really want to help though too. Yes. So, I mean, yes. it's it's a, it's this silly little cycle it where it doesn't even matter. Yes. Just ask for help. Yes. Because if I am available to help you, then I'm going to say I can help you. And then if I'm not, then I can also graciously say no. That's right. And exactly. That's okay. Exactly. So I think the, the, the reason that people don't ask for help, especially people who are used to doing things their own way mm -hmm. because their way is the right way. I don't know if that if you know any people like that either. But I think the reason that you don't want to ask for help is A, you don't want it done wrong. Mm -hmm. B, you're afraid of somebody saying no. Yeah. Because that's a, a whole, like, I don't even want to deal with that. I don't yeah. want to deal with somebody saying no. Mm -hmm. So I just won't ask. Or you're also thinking, well, I know I can do all of the things. Right. Or I feel like I have to do all of the right. things. And I don't want to show anyone that I can't do all of that's the things. That's right. Because everybody else is apparently doing all the things. And nobody's doing all the things. No <laughs> one's doing all the things. That's the thing. There's this like fictional mom out there that's the super mom that's doing everything. She's probably taking her kids Adderall in order to be able to do yeah. that. Drinking right? a lot of wine. Drinking a lot of wine. Not sleeping like, so well. Uh, yeah, right? Health is not good. Health is not good. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you really want a healthy holiday season, and I, and I really believe that if you don't have a healthy holiday season, you don't have a happy holiday season. Um, there are some things on the mental side that you need to sort of either offload or protect. So offload some things that like be willing to ditch some stuff. I don't mm -hmm. want, I don't do Christmas cards anymore. I mm -hmm. loved Christmas cards. I love the whole thing of it. It was too much. It's a lot. It's a lot. Cause you have to find the perfect picture yes. or what are you going to say? Or did I forget somebody or exactly yeah. it's a whole thing and I have friends that send me their Christmas cards and I love them please keep sending them right I love them but for me right now it's just not there and maybe next year I will yeah. like I'm an empty nester now maybe I could maybe I won't I did uh happy new year's cards because I yes. was so late for Christmas I'm nice. like mm. exactly new year's that's it that's when I got my yes shit together yeah well there you go <laughs> there you go so I think that you know the things that you keep and the things that you ditch are all going to support whatever this feeling is that you've decided that you want for Thanksgiving. Um, you know another thing that I think is really important, especially with and you know Jen is the is the health side, the nutrition side, the exercise side. I'm more the neck up, but I'm really concerned with nutrition and exercise because I'm getting older now, I'll be 60 next year. And I know, so excited. That's amazing. Um, I am in the stage of my life right now that I want to be functional. It doesn't matter what I look, it does matter what I look like. Oh, well. let, me not, let me not lie. I did do all of this in advance, but it doesn't matter what my body looks like. It matters how my body feels mm -hmm. and how it works. Mm -hmm. So um, all of those things are important when you look at the holidays because I think, I don't know if it's your, you're pretty disciplined about your fitness and yes. nutrition, right? Yes. Yes. So I don't know, do you ever have a, a holiday situation that you're out of control or eating in a way that's, that doesn't feel healthy to you or are you sort of aware of it as it goes along? Mm. Um, previously, mm -hmm. I could say, yeah, maybe things would, would kind of, you would get to that point where, um, you would reach this level and then all of a sudden you're like, ah, well, 
throw a band into the wind and just go for it. Right, kind of thing, right, 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 right. Yes. You hit this yes. point. But um, more recently, as, as I have matured in age as well, mm. um, I think that if you put these limits on things, it, it can backfire on you. I agree. Um, and also, I, I like to go into the holidays thinking a little bit more mentally. How is it going to make me feel? Right. Am I going to, am I, whatever, am I going to eat the extra whatever because I need it to make me feel happy? Mm -hmm. Or am I thinking about this like, oh, well, I just ran a 5K because I like to do a turkey trot this morning and so I can have a little extra mashed potatoes or whatever. What is the reason? I, I like to put nutrition into my body because it fuels me for what I'm going to do for the next day or, right. or whatever. Right. That's how I like to look at it. So when I have that perspective on it, I can think, oh, well, I can have a little piece of this because it's perfectly fine. Yes. And it's in moderation. Yes. And I don't need to eat the whole whatever because it doesn't taste that good afterwards. Yes. Anyway. Yes. You really just want to have a little taste. Yes. So that's what I like to tell myself. Right. What is this feeling? For myself, is it fueling my body for another workout? Is right. it fueling my my brain, my emotions, my what? Why am I having this, and how is it going to benefit me? Right, and it kind of helps to narrow things down a little bit. Yeah, it's not super crazy. Yeah, and what pops into my mind is something that I learned when I was in uh, my life coach certification, which is for people who have a problem with overeating, which I have in the past. I've been bulimic in the past, which is like the most severe form of overeating, and for me to keep myself in a zone where I perform optimally, both mentally and physically and emotionally and spiritually and all of it, I have to create a relationship with food that is loving, right? Like I'm not, I'm not gonna force feed myself because I'm not gonna force feed a baby. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna love myself. And if I eat that way and I'm very aware of what I'm doing, which is kind of what I started out on this whole thing, which is be aware of where you are in your day so that people don't pull you off of this feeling like that mm -hmm. boundary can just be awareness. Mm -hmm. You know, as you're eating something, does this really taste good? Like when does it stop tasting mm -hmm. good? And that's the thing we did in my life coaching certification was we have like all of these bad foods, junk foods. I don't think there are any bad foods, mm -hmm. but um, all of these foods and it was take, take all of them and then write down how you feel as you're eating them. How many bites does it take before it doesn't, doesn't taste delicious anymore? And on average, it was about three. Yeah, I believe that. Which is stunning to somebody who would go through an entire bag of cookies. Like mm. if it stopped tasting delicious at the third bite, like you can roll it up and put it back on the shelf. You can eat the whole bag. Like yeah. nobody's going to judge you. I'm not going to judge you for God's sake. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, does that feel playful? Like at what point does it stop feeling playful? If and that's your intention. Also, I mean, as a kid, sometimes you don't have, are not given the choice to eat what you would like. Right. right? Oma made green bean casserole and you have to have some of it. Right. right. But, but we're not, all kids anymore no. we are now adults and right. so if i don't want to eat the green bean casserole yes. because it doesn't taste good or make me feel good or whatever yeah i'm gonna not eat it right and i think that's uh, something that does happen often yes. so uh i and people can be like oh well you don't want to eat the roll because you're not eating carbs or who the heck cares yeah i'm gonna put whatever i want in my body right. because that's what i want to do and right. it really should not matter what anybody else is Thanks. saying yes yes um because it's what you want to do it's what you, you want joy. to do and it gives you joy so and i think that that is going to be the best guide for you if you decide what that feeling state is and you keep going back to it mm -hmm. and you can you know you can get pulled off track of course you're gonna get pulled off track right things are gonna pile up you're gonna have a knee-jerk reaction but if you can, in the moment that you become aware again, because you're losing awareness when you have knee-jerk reactions, right? Mm -hmm. In the moment that you become aware again, if you can say, okay, how playful does this feel right now? How mm -hmm. free does this feel right now? How loving does this feel right now? What can I do in the next three minutes 
to make it feel more playful. Then you can sort of come back into that feeling state. And, you know, for the relatives that visit that maybe aren't aligned with you in some way, politically, socially, whatever, um, I have found a way, especially if they're really grumpy and my way or the highway kind of people, if you get them talking about something that they love, mm -hmm. they're going to tell you something interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you keep them at a distance, like, oh my God, I just don't want to listen to this person. I just, then they're going to spew stuff at you. But if you actually connect with them and ask them questions, let them speak their piece about something they're passionate about, it could be interesting. Mm -hmm. You could create a relationship you didn't even know existed. Mm -hmm. And it's not that hard. You just have to listen. You just have to listen. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, Jumping on the when things get out of control kind of thing. Uh, if fitness is something that you like to do most days, mm -hmm. uh, as a coach of a lot of athletes who continue to train through the holidays, yes. I will tell you that the holidays are the hardest part because yes. everything always gets, uh, your, your time gets taken away. Right. As sometimes an excuse, sometimes it's a well meaning excuse and sometimes it's because you did not pay attention to things right. or you thought that we had to have this all or nothing yes. right so if jen programmed for me that i needed to run six miles today but it's now thanksgiving at two o'clock in the afternoon yeah. and i haven't figured anything out yet and it's still six miles no don't run the six miles yeah. do something else right and it so i have some ideas of things that you can do regardless of whatever your fitness level is okay okay so Maybe you are a higher level athlete that is trying to, that is training for a race that they have in the near future. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, probably for you taking a day off is okay. Yeah. I'm just going to put that one out there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, you, it, one day is not going to derail all of your fitness goals right. and be okay with it. But if you're not going to be okay with it, um, something super short and intense is what I kind of like to do because on those days, uh, if I have a lot of things that I have on my plan, and then I see that there's another thing that's going to take another hour or two. Not that I work out for an hour or two, probably like 30 minutes to 45 minutes, but it takes longer than I want to put into my plan. Something short and hard. Mm -hmm. um, you don't need equipment for it. Mm -hmm. You can do something like setting your timer to go off every minute. So we call this an every minute on the minute or an EMOM, right? So every minute on the minute, you need to do 150 squats. Mm -hmm which is a lot. I'm going to say 150 squats is a lot, but your timer goes off and you go and you squat as many squats as you can in a minute. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's 20 or mm -hmm. 25 or 30, whatever. And then when the timer goes off, you stop and you do a different exercise. I like to do pushups. Mm -hmm. So then you do five pushups and then you get back up, but the timer keeps going. Mm -hmm. So now you have maybe 45 seconds to finish that minute of squats and then you keep going. So that gives you 150 squats, probably 20 or 25 push-ups, and it's a, something you can do for five, six, seven minutes. I mean, you can probably five, find that amount of time Yes. whenever. Yeah. You don't need to do it any specific place. You don't have to have any specific workout gear right. to do it. You can do it in wherever, and right. it's it'll at least get you going, get the blood flowing. Right. And then maybe, maybe you realize that you have a little bit more time, so then that'll that'll propel you to go for a jog or maybe you go for a walk or you add something else to it. Sometimes I get bogged down with the, the pressure of having the things to do yeah. and then it just makes you not want to do anything. But right. you do something right. small like that to get started. Yes. And then you can also do something for you. Yes. Right, whether it's five minutes or going for a 30 minute walk or or doing the program that you have on, on your exercise program because you planned well enough and you decided to get up at five o'clock in the morning. I mean, it's it's just something for you right. so that you can also handle the stress better. Yes. Because those of us who do exercise most days, if we don't get to expend that energy, then that just makes me more stressed. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And if you don't push those stress hormones through your body, and for me, aerobic exercise is the best thing to do mm -hmm. that. If I don't do that, it builds up and I am witchy. So uh, my, my um, sort of my credo as a former perfectionist is that 
trying to be perfect mm -hmm. and instead being witchy and stressed, you're not even average at that point. Mm -hmm. Like you haven't even gotten to an average. You are so far below that because you're trying to be perfect. So if you've adopted that something is better than nothing credo instead, five push-ups, 10 squats, mm -hmm. a 20 minute walk with your dog, whatever, something is better than nothing. And, and you also don't get that feeling of, oh, I didn't do my such and such, mm -hmm. so I might as well just give up. Right. You don't get that, oh my God, I ate a piece of pie, I might as well just give up. Like something is better than nothing. And also that kind of judgment is not playful. No. That is not fun. So no. if you find yourself doing that, just say, oh, hey, no, wait a minute, stop, reset. And I do that all the time. Like I'll find myself going into old patterns. I'm like, no, stop, reset. What feels playful right now? Mm -hmm. So just keep coming back to that. What feels playful right now? What feels fun right now? What feels whatever, whatever you want your holidays to feel like. And then I think too, when you have this audience that may or may not be aware of how you live your life, correct? then you can show them that I, I was able to, let me show you how to do an easy squat. Maybe, yes. maybe you can do it with the kids, yes. right? Because sometimes, sometimes kids are in a great environment and there's a bunch of other kids there and maybe you're in a grandparent's house and they don't like a lot of kids running around and being noisy. So this would be a great way to take some time to go outside and exercise with the kids or teach, teach Oma and Oba how to squat out yes. of the chair because they haven't moved in a while and it's something that they should be able to do. So you can, play with this however you you feel appropriate for the situation right. and also kind of teach and explain the importance of movement and yeah and and not being stressed and not being stressed and i think that if you have an attitude of something is better than nothing it does lead to a less stressful existence mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's you know and i do that all the time it, whether it's you know making my own food and meal prepping and if I don't do it today, I'll eat a piece of fruit. I don't know what it is. It's literally something is better than nothing. Mm -hmm. So we would just both love for you to adopt this, this Thanksgiving, because it's our test run. Yes. And see how it goes. And please let us know how it goes. Um, our website details will be on the Facebook Live. Maybe. I mean, I put them on there before. <laughs> Maybe they won't. Um, hopefully that will work and the website details and our contact details will be on there. And also, it, most of the tips that I've gone through today will be in my blog that's going to come out on Sunday. And if you want to read the blog, you can click the sign up button on this um, Facebook page. So many words and things. Um, sign up button on the Facebook page or go to the website and sign up and subscribe and then you'll get that newsletter and blog and how how can they get in touch with you oh just don't yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's no okay. time no just kidding um i also blue water multi-sport it, it my if you have tried to get in touch with me i'm sure you're like wow jen's really great at getting back with people mm. Um, she's a little busy right now. There, don't get in touch with Dr. Jen. You know okay. what? Get in touch with me. I have lots of time. I don't have kids at home. And then I'll just tell her what you said. <laughs> like that. That's much more efficient. I think the, the biggest thing though is if you have questions or you have something that works for you too, we need to get this community, like a forum going yes. because maybe what we're saying, you're like, okay, I kind of understand right. that, but this is something that I've done too. Let's help each other, help each yes. other. And I love that. Comments, the comments on this on this feed, on this live, whatever this thing is. Anyway, I'm a boomer. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but if you say in the comments things, <laughs> questions that you have, or things that you use to make your holidays more joyful, please let us know because we need help too. Like, yes. yeah, everybody needs help, and we're asking you for help. See, you did that. I asked for help. I know. I'm so excited. I'm Thank growing. you so much, everybody, for enjoying us today. And uh, we hope to see you in the future, but it'll just depend on Jen's schedule. So, yes. Yes. All right. Thank you so Thanks, much. Guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs>